The Alaska Milk Run is one of the most incredible flights in the world. While providing essential supplies and access to some of Alaska's most remote towns, it's also an insanely unique flight that is marveled by app geeks all over the world. Join me today as I fly one of my bucket list flights, the Alaska Airlines Milk Run. Okay, so right now we are at CVG. We're about to get on our flight to go to Seattle, where we have just a 12 hour layover before we get on our flight for the Milk Run. Before we get into this, I just wanted to say a really big thank you to Alaska Airlines. They are sending me and my mom on this trip and I am so excited. This is such a dream trip for me. Okay, let's go. flight to Seattle was about four and a half hours long and we chased the sunset across the U.S. As we got closer to Seattle, Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, and Mount St. Helens came into view. I have flown this approach where you can't see Mount Rainier at all, so even though it was a little hazy, I was so excited. Now that we've made it to Seattle, let me tell you a little bit more about the Milk Run. There are six different flights, three each direction, that travel to seven different cities on the Alaskan Panhandle. Today, we're flying on flight 65, which travels from Seattle up to Ketchikan, then to Wrangell, then up to Peters then up to Juneau before reaching our final destination of Anchorage. These milk run flights date back to the early days of Alaska Airlines and they happen every single day, rain or shine. None of these towns are connected to the mainland by roads, so the only way to get to these towns is by plane or boat. These flights provide supplies, medicine, food, and other items that shouldn't or can't be shipped on a boat. For people living in these communities, these flights are essential because they are the main way to get on and off these islands. There are ferries available, but they can take days compared to just a few hours for a flight. We made our way down into Ketchikan, the gorgeous mountainous islands that make up this part of the world came into view and I was seriously in awe. This was my face the entire time of this flight. It was just so beautiful. We just happened to be landing at the exact same time as this seaplane, which I had never seen a seaplane. So this was so cool and was just the first of many seaplanes we would see this day. Ketchikan's airport sits out on a separate island from the island that the town sits on, and the only way to get to the airport is by ferry. Ketchikan has a population of just over 8,000 and was actually Alaska's first incorporated city in 1900. That, combined with its southern location, gives it the nickname of Alaska's first city. Ketchikan gets between 140 and 160 inches of rain per year, which is just insane. For comparison, Seattle only gets 40 inches of rain a year. You are supposed to stay on the plane at each stop or you have to go through security again, but the flight attendants do come through and offer water, which is super nice. While we were on the ground, I noticed a cruise ship coming towards us, which ended up being the Disney Wonder. And I love cruise ships, so this was just so cool for me to see.
It wasn't long before we were headed back out of Ketchikan, but there was a little bit of commotion waiting for us at the end of the runway. Uh, what's on fire? Our next flight to Wrangell was just 19 minutes long, barely enough time to pop up over the clouds before going back down. The mountains on this approach were honestly just so breathtaking, I could not believe I was witnessing it with my own eyes. Wrangell's airport has just one runway and no taxiway, which means you get to turn around on the runway. A lot of this trip is just really cool stuff on a 737 that you don't get to do anywhere else. Wrangell sits right on the tip of Wrangell Island, and the airport itself sits right on the ocean. Wrangell has a population of just over 2,000, making it our smallest stop today. Wrangell and really all of the towns that we're visiting today have very robust fishing industries and also see quite a bit of tourism. Unloading and loading process takes about 45 minutes, but honestly, it goes by really fast. Our next flight up to Petersburg lasted only eight minutes, which I still cannot get over. It has got to be one of the shortest 737 flights in the whole world. Petersburg has a population of just over 3,000, and one thing I found super interesting about Petersburg is that every May they hold a huge festival called the Little Norway Festival to celebrate Norwegian Constitution Day. They've been holding this festival since 1958 and is said to also celebrate the U.S. Armed Forces as well as the start of fishing season. As we headed out for our last short flight of the day, I couldn't help but feel massive appreciation for everything happening around me. You could feel a sense of community on these flights that I've really never felt on an airplane, and it felt like a lot of the people around us knew each other and were catching up like old friends. People that sat near us shared things that they had experienced in Alaska, showed pictures, and shared things that we had to see. This is a part of the country like no other, and it was truly just incredible.
We have arrived at our last stop before Anchorage, Juneau, Alaska. Juneau is the capital of Alaska and joins Honolulu as being the only two state capitals without a road connecting them to mainland North America. If you can't tell by the airport being much bigger than our previous airports, the city of Juneau has a population of over 32,000, which makes it much bigger than our previous stops. The airport itself actually sits a good bit north of the city of Juneau, and Juneau sits right at the base of very tall mountains. Juneau was the first place we really experienced any kind of weather on this trip. We got extremely lucky. Alaska is not necessarily known for its sunny weather, so the fact that we were not in the clouds this entire trip, I consider to be a win. Although most of this flight was cloudy, the clouds started to clear right as we were coming into Anchorage, giving us this stunning view of the city. Anchorage, Alaska is home to over 300,000 people, making it Alaska's biggest city. That population means it makes up 40% of Alaska's total population. Anchorage is less than a 10-hour flight from 90% of the industrialized world, which means it's a great airport for a cargo hub. If you love planes like me, you cannot go to Anchorage without visiting Point Woronzoff Park. This is such an amazing plane spotting location, and there is a huge variety of planes you will never get bored. to share how you can also book the milk run if you are interested. Here are all six flights, their flight numbers, and all of the locations they stop at. Once you've decided on flight or flights that you want to take, head to Alaska's website and use all search options to bring up their multi-city search. You'll have to play around with it depending on your route, but here are the cities that I wrote for the route that we took, and then just make sure they are all on the same day. Once you hit find flights, it will bring up each of your flights individually and you'll add them all to your cart at once. And you'll also want to make sure the flight number matches the one that you want. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!